Mossman and Verdi, the last two for Shenandoah. Verdi winning that was still half HP. I thought he was a little lower than that. Moss is going to clean things up. Mossman and Verdi, they're really coming in clutch in that uh, last round there. Mossman, from a distance, able to just laser. Less Kentucky can get something going, but they're playing right into the hands of Shenandoah. Verdi with didn't let Kentucky really get into a rhythm. Shenandoah put on the gas. The aggression was there. Relic and Toxic, of course, going crazy right now for Shenandoah. And then Verdi and Toxic also positive. Moss is going to open things up. He's a lot of the map from that angle. Tubby trying to rush control, but Relic early is absolutely massive. Yeah, and Relic not slowing down now. Eight and two for Relic Mossman. Still holding that angle, I believe, in this matchup. Kentucky finding good kills, finding good avenues, but not able to capitalize on them. Good enough right there. Moss, though, on the flank around, trying to find a pick. Finds one. Is this B point? Let's see if they can get it. Toxic's just in the spawn right now. Yeah, Toxic <laughs> playing out of his mind. I mean, almost two double digits, one away from. Not even able to leave their spawn right now. Relic locking it down at 20 kills. But Relic, in particular, I think he ended 23 and 5. Yeah, something like that. It is a casual 23 for them. Yeah. Incredible start from Shenandoah, gonna hold that first point first, but St. Mary's is quickly gonna take it back, and steve is gonna oh pick up Oh my two. god! Steve coming in big with the two-piece, control back in Farmingdale's favor. Now we have Steve in a 1v1 situation. Now we're just trying to play for this control, we're nice and slow, you don't have to over today. Boxman just going crazy, getting one, as John, or as Relic also gets another one. Mossman gets a second! Does he get the third? He gets oh. the third! Mossman is popping off right now. Playing lights out. I mean, getting those massive picks. Oh, Stevo gets two big ones. Doesn't get him. But no matter oh, where they go, Mossman Moss. Moss. is just there, Vitaly! Mossman! Flash, though. But there's still contested time. This is big. Relic does get the. Something happened. Does not see Tez. Tez in the corner will take down Relic. Uh, and again, on the defense, Mossman gonna find another pick. This man is 20 and 6. Oh, oh but gonna find himself in an explosion. Steve gets a huge pick into that. He like, knows he has to come from this angle. Oh, Tox is gonna find him. Toxic! Oh! Playing lights out. Uh, Call of Duty right now. Full control over this. A bomb. Steve getting a huge pick onto trade back coming through from Shenandoah. 3v4 now. Farmingdale trying to make something happen. Whoa! Toxic gonna try to shoot through this wall, not quite gonna find it. Trying to sneak around the tank, but oh Toxic's gonna hunt you. Sees him, identifies it. Tez is just trying to stay alive. They know that about Ed's Toxic killing spree of five. Up in here, it looks like Mossman oh is gonna gosh. find him, man. Yeah, Spades again. Oh, gives up the control, but it's gonna be running into Vayne, making a farm. So they're really trying to just funnel them for speed. Yeah, oh! Relic from SMU and another 4v1 is going to be in Shenandoah's hands. Corvos is the last alive. He's going to have to find some way to plant this bomb, but he knows steve -O's in this building, and he's going to have to take a 1v1 with him, and that's not a spot you want to be at, especially when Shenandoah has backup. Shut See Tez coming right around that corner, and really, Relic cleaned up. Shenandoah going to take that round for the A, and Toxic, I believe, sees this. Steve-O getting aggressive here. Get one, does he get two? Toxic takes up that second. Now we're looking for a third, and Steve-O! And will be dropped there by Faze. Yeah, and there's going to be a pitch coming in. Steve-O, he knows there's another one there as well. Is he going to force him to peek? Oh, no, he doesn't know. I thought he zones the tally, no. but nine lives have been taken. A whole cat is out of the bag, oh my and Toxic is just going to... But there's another pitch coming in by Spaze. I don't think they know about this. Sivo find their way into these zones, but it looks like the picks are oh, just going to be what this is all Relic. about. Relic with another. Being able to get that huge pick. One more. Oh my gosh, Moss. Oh, kind of doing the same kind of oh. thing, spreading out around. Oh. Moss man oh, has the gosh. flank, and we'll find. SMU is finally going to get some progress on B. Relic oh, going my crazy, gosh. and Toxic taking. A bomb as Stevo flanks, gets one huge pick, is scared for the flank. Calium and Steve! 
with this. these incredible, incredible intro picks with the grenade, and then Relic gonna find himself a bit over. Trying to find something. Relic is jumped on by Spades. Oh, Trades coming huge. across the board. 2v2 Mossman holding the angle. The oh, flick back! Cured as Evo continues to push. Gonna find Corvo. Oh, is he gonna find the second Evo. one? Man, going big here as they are spawning towards this ice cream area, as you see on the minimap. And are continuing to capture B, Vitali. Relic is trying to get this time as Toxic and Steven. I mean, yes, they're up to lives farming Dale, but Toxic does see this, gets a massive pick. Hey, and that's what SMU's win condition is here. If Shendoa captures oh that point, it is over. Now, trying to stop uh, the reinforcements coming from Carbonite. Pick up picks of their own, and Stevo takes down Tez yet again. Stevo. Lives left, 15 seconds on the clock. They need to make something happen on this A side, but Relic is just holding his angle. Oh, like, there's no replay going through. Huge for Shenandoah. It's a 3v3 right now, and this is gonna be huge. This P2 tank trying to just keep him at bay, and we have this Relic in mid. Like, we got a cap, and we're getting two now. That's a huge second tick. And he do, but really unable to find any ground. And now Farming Dell is putting them in, really just holding them at bay. Getting a big information and Relic trying to push out in an advantageous position, right? We see CDL already on top of that uh, grind flip spawn, which is a big brain play. Toxic gets one, potentially can get a second. Does they we need Relic to stay alive here and try and just play his life as we see Hick and we're still tied up. <gasps> Relic needs to win this. Oh, Relic! Oh. He doesn't know where he is. Tez able to find two. Stevo does pick up one. And we need to get some time here on this P1. Behind Stevo, and he will take two Relic, losing the fight there. Mossman will take him. Oh, we just need to find another. Relic looking for CDL. Oh my god. They need to start pressuring this fast. As Space gets one, Stevo does get that trade. Oh, Stevo gets three. Stevo, Stevo, you're on another level. Able to answer back. Carbonize is dead. Mossman does not see space. Oh! What the hell does he able to flick? Well, Voidex did take a chip of damage. Maryville starting off a little bit cheap. Doesn't have full health. Is still going to take it on. The hammers exchange both ways. You have to go home together. Oh! Now Voidex doesn't get the chance to pop it out. Be... The Wrecking Ball here does not stand at all in front of Ben. He is essentially free to push on forwards as he sees fit. It's going to be difficult to lock down a target. A lot of them seen. A couple ultimates from Maryville. We'll go ahead, get them that flip back in control. Send a dove. Love one more. The mines making it ever more challenging to get onto the objective. Those are taking significant ship. His first objective. Yet Shenandoah did show us some good signs of life. Yeah, Shenandoah. The TP from King coming in immediately. Has to raid out. That's an amazing May wall. And bye bye. King. Time fades. If there's nobody available for one last round, Maryville will be going away with Antarctic Peninsula. Yeah, I mean Maryville on that last push there, saying. If you want to get to the point, you are going to have to go through all five members of Maryville, and Shandor was really just unable to do that in that instance. And at that time, it was got to the it got to the point where Maryville had such an ultimate advantage. Yeah. They were controlling so much space that it literally Shenandoah had to win one. But no, it's vision from downtown. They're getting wiped once more. Maryville pushing on up. They want to make sure the Hornets don't even get to the objective. Yeah, Maryville just but really just unable. To uh, to reach that next point. How does work? Communication Voidex is ready to jump Can he hit it? Yes! But it my goodness! Did Voidex really make a name for himself here on Hotty So? Very go. Up 2-0 and on that point. Yeah, shots. King was able to hit a majority of them in favor of Maryville. Voidex getting kicks here and there. But again, Shenandoah not able to push forward to take that next step to really snowball off of those trades and really pick off members one at a time. Yeah, and th that's the really difficult part. When Maryville are running a composite, no, the chase is there. Ben getting the tank. Now you need to focus on who is next. The turrets, you'll see them sitting outside the door. They go no, 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 the turret. No, you sir. It's going to be enough, though. Maryville came into this with five whole ultimates to expend. Sound barrier not being one of them. The Katsune Rush, a fear certainly to have. It's going on in. So grab both supports off of a single seismic slam. This one has to be closed out quick in order for it to go through the health. Any damage taken is permanent to anybody. It does its job by zoning players off, not wanting to get frozen up. Trade does go down. Voidix can make up for the deficit. That's one for the second. The Dried Hideaway, but no, look me. 
Ghost. It's been striking the entirety of Maryville. It's painted in purple. So much health, though, is in their back pocket that they... It's basically like nothing was done throughout all of that. Shenandoah call it. But, fortunately, they lost too many players on the approach once again. Maryville, the point goes through just as Ben hits the flash point. Maryville taking away to... Critical moments being able to save False, who is play of the game uh, for this flash point map. And, and really just unable to be able to follow up on the picks that they had for Shenandoah. They had really good... She holds, it's feeling like we've been here before We're both so broke, that's something it'll keep us afloat Don't work too slow, we can't keep falling deeper again Came too close and the taste so far from pure A rush of blood, but we search for so much We've all been here 
I don't think he sees the guy right there. Does find the guy planting the bomb. Hold the it into a second. 1v3 looking for the punch, looking for the last two. He's gonna find one though. He gets it with us. Absolutely a must make because of the big and ease of easy. them. And what? The rest of his team is slowly collapsing. The Sombra is the last one. Oh, and then Blade yes. with the clutch. Nella gonna get the Nair, starting up the Nair train. Boy cannot get out of it. What are we gonna see? The forward air, then down air. Taking some form of space outside the spawn door, but Dragon Blade's gonna look to take it right back with a huge shatter. Oh my god! Another pick! Another pick! Oh, he just keeps going! He's a big Hard point in the hand of the other team. Toxic trying to find one. Finds a second! Does he get the 30? Finishes off with the pistol! And the entire team in front of him, and he's gonna find four! The ace, actually! Push on the corner and Jinji staying deep instead of going to fetch like usual. Oh my oh god, my kick off probably with a four piece. Shenandoah did show us some good signs of life. Yeah, Shenandoah. He peed from King coming in immediately after Wraith out. That's an amazing May wall. And bye bye, Faze. If there's nobody available for one last round, Maryville will be going away with Antarctic Peninsula. Yeah, I mean, Maryville on that last push there. Dang. If you want to get to the point, you are going to have to go through all five members of Maryville. And Shenandoah was really just unable to do that in that instance. And at that time, it was got to the it got to the point where Maryville had such an ultimate advantage. Yep. They were control. And we're <laughs> back, and again, we're going to be going against Mount St. Mary's um, in Rocket League as well. So stay tuned. This is going to be really big day to day. Uh, Moss, talk to me a little bit about what happened on Monday for CCL with uh, Call of Duty. We played SMU first, yep. and I think we did. We played very well. We three one three zero. Yep. And then we had to play a very good team in Farmingdale. And we kind of trolled during the control a little bit. I think we had a shot at that one. We won the search. We have to, we have to do a better job at our hard points. Sure. We rotates. Not, not the best sure. right now. Sure. But I think that it's, there's a lot to build on off of Monday night. And that's wonderful. Now, I, there was just some recent news, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot of new updates for Call of Duty. Why don't you talk me through them? Yeah, there's a huge Season 2 update today. Um, the MCW, which is the meta AR, has been nerfed. The aim down sight speed and the sprint to fire speed got nerfed. It's a lot mm. slower now. Yeah. So the pros in the CDL have been trying out the, I think it's BP-50? BP-50, BP-50. Yep. It's called the BP-50. It's a little faster. Yep. I don't think it hits as hard at longer range, but it felt good. I was shooting bots a little bit with it earlier. Yeah. Nothing happened to the SMG, but the pros are still trying out. The, I think it's called the something seven? Um, that's a great, I, not too, I, I don't know remember. that one. That's a, new one. that's a new one. That's a new one. Probably, it may or may not work out with that. Both of them are currently banned in ranked play, and I don't think they could be used in Nace right. just yet. Um, another thing that happened was Rio has just replaced both that's Skid right. Row S&D and Terminal Hardpoint in the map rotation. Pros have been trying out for a little bit. I know our team has scrimmed it a couple times. Right. Not, not as much as we want to. I don't think it's in the NACE rotation just yet. Right. But I know it's in the CCL rotation, and it should be in the CXP rotation as well. That's awesome. Is there anything else that uh, we, we should be looking forward to in COD as far as updates go or um, just what's going on today with the game? Well, as far as updates go, I think there was also a health regen. Oh, update. that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so right. it used to be... Once you get out of a gunfight, that's usually when you regen health. It's now it was went from seven point seven seconds, I think, mm. to now five seconds. Five seconds. Oh. So once you start regening, you'll regen a little bit faster. 
And I think you also regen like fat like you start regening faster as well. Right. Okay. So that's that's another change, which I think is going to speed the game up a little bit, which is a little crazy because the game all already plays very fast. It does feel pretty fast. So nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So now we're going to be getting into a little bit of Valorant soon, um, and against Ringling College. So I feel like this is going to be a good one. Again, our Valorant team has been growing ever since the uh, start of the last semester. Um, we've been a club team for Valorant, and now we moved up to Academy for Valorant as well. So we are looking to try and get into more leagues. Um, currently, we are in NECC, so I believe that's going to be the game that's played today. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of talent on that team as well. I mean, to start off, we got the the person who's been sticking out the longest. We have Clab Yeller, right, yeah. who has basically formed the team from the ground up, has been able to scout players, been able to do their best to try and get a, a group together. And they finally did it, and they were able to get you know, the ball rolling on that. So uh, hats off to Clabiella on that one. Um, we got other players. I believe Noble is the other player that is... Uh, that I'm familiar with. So Noble, he's also has pr uh, prior experience in coaching, has also had prior experience in competition outside of collegiate. So he's pretty well versed in the in the space of Valorant. Mm -hmm. So it, we should be looking at some pretty good games today. And we also got some three new young guns coming in. So yeah. we're just excited to see how that goes. Um, again, today is going to be a little bit different than majority of our streams. We're going to be doing a um, a like a red zone, like NFL type uh, broadcast today. So we're going to have multiple screens, uh, multiple gameplay going on at once. Uh, we are going to be highlighting Call of Duty um, as well whenever their uh, games are being played. And for Valorant as well, we're going to be casting that as well. And then afterwards, we got Rocket League as well. So again, we got a lot of stuff going on today. Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of the games today are going to be really, really close. Um, I really have... I, I'm not too sure how good Ringling College is. I, I haven't done my re extensive research on that one, but uh, given the information that I have heard from the, the team, um, you know, it should be a pretty good game. So I do believe, I think they're all around the same ranks on both teams. I believe so, yeah. Within at least like a couple ranks or two, like give or take one or two right. ranks. And so I think that'll be a close game. I know our Valorant team has been practicing a lot. Yeah. They're constantly in the lab, if that's what you call it. I call yeah. it that because fighting game, you know, right. that's what I usually call it. Right, right. Um, we've, uh, the COD team is playing against Rowan. Okay. And I know Rowan lost to, I believe, SMU 3-1 oh. or 3-0. Okay. So we kind of know, you know, the, the skill, skill level, the skill right, level right, right. there. But you never know what could happen. We do. We are playing a different roster than we usually play for Nason. And it looks like we're going to get into the draft for Valorant. And we have three players that we were talking about. We have... Um, Ryuk, we have Ultra Lee, and then we also have, um, I might mispronounce this one, uh, Kreiser. I, I believe I might have pronounced that wrong, but that's all right. We got basically a singular smoke setup with uh, two duelists as well. So this is going to be pretty fast-paced gameplay. And on the other team on Ringling, we have the double smoke. So typically what I've seen teams do on this map is run the double smoke um, which is what they're going for the viper and the brimstone um, but the gecko is a little bit different the gecko I, I haven't really seen so much gecko I don't know if they have made any recent changes on him um, his utility is really nice but at the same time uh, it kind of pops a little bit slower than other util piece of utilities so for example his flash is the one I'm more so worried uh, talking about it does get really good information on where the person is but in terms of um, effectiveness. There are other uh, agents, in my opinion, that I feel like are a little bit better. Um, but it should be a still a very interesting match. We're getting into this round one, pistol round. Always a fun one. Might even see something crazy going on. But we're going to be going into this strong Clabiella. It looks like they're going to be pushing up towards this uh, bathroom as we have Noble holding this uh, A main choke. And we got the right other here. two uh, just holding B that B long and securing that side on B. Yeah, it looks like we have a really heavy A set up here. Yeah. We sent an extra person A. We only have two people on B. Yeah. And it looks like we could be reading it as, looks like Ringling is setting up for an A push, a very aggressive one. Yeah. And something that a lot of teams do, again, with this double of smoke setup is they'll set up the Viper wall early and then just try and either bait uh, some rotates or just try and get something going. But as we are seeing right now, the wall is up, Molly is out. And they're just trying to play a little bit slow, waiting for some utility to be put down. 
I think they're going to be trying to get a little bit aggressive here. They're trying to push up in a lamp. Snowball gets one. He's trying to stay alive here. They are pushed out on site. Clive Yellow goes down and Ultra League does get the trade onto that. Ultra League gets two. And now we're in a 4v2 situation. One enemy remaining. Spike down A. Noble gets another pick. It's going to be a 1v4 situation here. 55 seconds left, but we know where they're oh. at. Noble picks up the final kill. Shenandoah picks up round one on the defense side. I saw a lot of good things there. Yeah. We saw trades. Nobody was really playing alone. Yep. And the one rotate did come in. We, we left one B just in case they of ended course. up rotating, but we kind of constricted their run A to try and make sure they weren't able to leave, and it worked right out there. in the end. That, that's exactly right. right. I mean, again, the wall is really something that uh, will help teams uh, get the rotates where needed or just be able to put pressure where, you know, if they don't know that anyone's there, you know, it's, it's just a great piece of utility to have, especially on a map like this. Noble is going to be going for some jump peaks. Does, I believe, spot power. Um, and they're just trying to get a little bit aggressive against their main main. And Noble already has a Vandal for round two. This is going to be a really good buy round for him. Oh, you, you can spray this. Yep, there's one. Oh, nice. Gets out with his life. Just plays calm and cool. Nice, gets a second, gets a third. Noble, can he go for the ace? Noble gets the ace! Absolutely Noble! Wonderful plays there out of Noble. Just sitting in that smoke, playing patient. Just hits all the shots. Exactly, and, you, and something that was great that you saw there was he was able to back out after he gets one pick, plays his life for a little bit, and then just waits for them to get aggressive. And it netted him an entire ace. So hats off to Noble for getting and playing that super well. Now, if I'm on the side of Ringling College, I feel like we're going to try and hit B here, which I think is just going to happen. I'm going to throw up a little Viper wall just for, again, the, the default setup, as you will. But we're going to try and go for this B now, and... Ringling College are on a full buy round. So let's see where we can let's see what happens here. Miso is going to get spotted out and gets that first pick, making it a 4v5 situation for Shenandoah. Yeah, a really huge pick there on the attack side. And it looks like they're going to try to do something with it. Here's they're going to push in. Trapwire detects a few. Cersei is going to go down. Power gets that huge pick. As now where they're, Senado is now in a 3v5 retake situation as that bomb's gonna go down. Huge kill there out of Noble. Looking for the second, Ooh. not gonna be able to get it. 2v4 here for Senado, or will they be able to get it? Clabiella does get one though. Now it's a 1v3 situation, does have a Phantom. I mean, I don't know if you really save for this one or if you just try and do what you can. Try and get some damage, and there it is, power. With a nice little one tap to finish off that round three. Senado up one round. Yeah, huge full buy round there for Ringling College, and they were able to translate that money into a round win. Yeah. And momentum kind of maybe going back towards Ringling, but it's 2-1 here as we see kind of a split setup and a split defense again for yeah. both teams. And I believe Shenandoah is going to try and buy what they can, buy those uh, Vandals and try and get as much value out of that as possible. Ryuk is going to try and push up this along, I believe, or just try and get some sort of information. Ryuk trying to shoulder it. Does go down by birds. And now they're just trying to set up. They're going to be trying to push through this. Gecko does get the flash. And Surzu does get one, does get two as well. Now we're looking for a third. Tripwire goes off. I don't think they know. Oh, Cam spotted him. Clive Yell gets one, but gets traded out by Miso. Enemy remaining. Noble finishes it off with a nice two piece to secure that round four. And right as we think Ringling may be getting a little bit of momentum, Shenandoah are there to uh, absolutely shut them down on that defensive round. And I think they played the info game and they played the patience game very well there. Yeah. Not getting too over aggressive, making sure that if one of their own teammates get went down, they got the trade, and it just kind of worked out there. As we see, looks like Ringling's going back for another A hit. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, they're on a save round. Uh, you know, whatever they can buy, as long as they're able to get a next, a next round of full buy. Uh, they're going to try and do something you know different, something a little bit more aggressive. They do have a little bit of control of that bathroom Smoke's there. Down. As Noble does put out a smoke, 
tries to just keep him at bay. Viper does have lineups though. Oh, and Noble gets aggressive, does get one. Miso is down. Now they don't have a healer. Ultra Lee does use their fade dog to spot one as Co Blue does get two with the with the Bucky and gets flashed. Ultra Lee. Oh my gosh. Ultra Lee does go down though as Co Blue has a Vandal. Now it's a 2v3, 2v4 situation, sorry, for Ringling College. Yeah, this is a huge eco round. If Ringling is able to get this, they might be able to swing the momentum. And just as I say that, Ryu going to try to level the playing field a little bit. Now it's going to be a 2v3. Bomb is down, though. Cersei is trying to get some smash Ryuk. face as Ryu gets two, oh, but gets traded out by power. It's a 1v1 here. Oh. Cersei gets the kill. A huge round saving kill there for Cersei on the side of Shenandoah. That was a great, great uh, example of just, you know, playing your life, trying to get at least one. And then you can just play for those picks. You can play for those trades. And Shenandoah up 4-1. Yeah, a huge Shenandoah. round there. For Whoa. a second there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> for a second there, it looked like Ringling was able to translate that low eco round into a, into a round win that probably shouldn't have happened. But thankfully, Ryu, Cersei are able to able to take that round for Shenandoah. Yeah, and as you see on the stats, Noble is 12-2 and two right now. I mean, that's just a crazy stat line. Five rounds in to their first map. Just absolutely not missing. No. At all. Not at all. The wall goes up, tries to get a little bit of fake going as we do see the side of Ringling College trying to push up with their Thrasher. Power is just trying to clear out whatever they can. Trying to see if they can get a stun. Co Blue does spot one in the back. Do they know that Ryuk is in the cubby? They do, but they get traded. Power is still alive. And Co Blue is going to try and chow this. Oh, and Cersei does back up. Plays their life. Now it's a 4v4 situation. They're going to try and play towards this elbow. They're going to have a nice little pinch set up. And they're planting. Oh, massive fade ult comes in. Co Blue does get Ultra Lee, though. Clabiola does get power. And Noble pushes out the smoke. Gets one, gets two. Can they find the third? Cersei gets that three, and it's 5-1 on the side of Shenandoah. The retakes on the side of Shenandoah are looking absolutely beautiful. Just in-sync teamwork, not missing their shots, able to communicate very well. Usage of their util just coming in very well. Yeah, I mean, the ult was the biggest part of that retake, right? I mean, if they did, if Ultra Lee didn't have that ultimate, it would have been a little bit more tough to try and figure out where the people are. And... Now we see Ringling College going into a timeout. This is huge. Yeah. I, I feel like if you're Ringling College, you know, you're you're definitely on playing on your heels right now. Um, you want to try and do something different, try and play the pace a little bit different, either up the tempo or just keep it, you know, at a slow, steady pace. I think what they've been doing right now is playing it slow, but maybe it's time for them to pick it up a little bit. Yeah, they may have to try to get a little bit faster. I know it's tough. You're down 5-1, you're down five, five, and... You're kind of, tr you're kind of behind. You're trying to figure out what can we really change here. Exactly. As we're going to take a look, <laughs> take a look at some of the COD maps that are coming up in Shenandoah's COD match against Rowan. We're going to see a Karachi hardpoint invasion search, Karachi control invasion <laughs> hardpoint, and Karachi search. So we're only playing two maps today. Yeah, which is very interesting. Karachi usually not a map we choose to play. So I'm a little interested in <laughs> what happened there in the band picks. I want to hear some. I want to hear some from my teammates. Yeah. And figure out what happened there. Invasion. I really like our search on invasion yep. and our invasion hardpoint. Yeah. The Karachi control is probably the most balanced control that we we'll see. Right. As attack and defense both have very good shot at winning the round here. As we're going to go back to our balance oh, game. Clap Clap yellow. Going for oh. the old. And there's a Rosa ult from Clab Yellow, unfortunately, as Noble does happen to get one for the trade. 4v4 now. It's kind of a heat check. A little bit. A little bit. But hey, we like to get a little aggressive. Oh my Speaking god, of aggressive on a flank. Only gets one, though. You will not uh, kill my ally. <laughs> only gets one on the flank there, but 3v4. We're going to see a res out of the Sage on the side of Ringling College. I don't know if they know that Shenandoah was on this flank. No oh. one's really looking at it. We do have one player on the side of Ringling playing a little cubby down mid. The Brimbolt does get popped as they're now funneled back towards this main. Noble gets one as Ares Pro does get two. Now a 1v3 situation. This is going to be really difficult. 
going to be really difficult, oh. but Cersei has been playing very well this map, gets the first pick, only needs two more. Bomb is down, going to have to work a little fast here. A little bit, but I think they got a little bit of info, maybe. One's playing close. Oh, and Miso does happen to pick that one up, solidifying their second round. That's a huge round that's very needed on the side of Ringling. You're coming out of a timeout. You don't really know exactly what was going wrong the first round, but it looks like they fi they used that timeout and they figured it out. Yeah. Going to try to swing the momentum back in their favor. Yeah. I mean, especially after a timeout like that, you want to make sure you're just regrouped. want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. As, at times, it looked like they were a little bit playing their ones, which isn't bad, but at the same time, you just want to play together, make sure that you're, you know, Thank trading you kills, and they got it done. Round number eight. Smoke's down. Yeah, as we Bradley. see here, it looks like Ringling setting up for another A push. Slowing down a little bit. We see some smoke usage there out of the brimstone. Yep. Kind of just holding an angle here. Trying to see if he can spot any info. Oh, does spot him. Does get some info off that knife jump. The jet's going to oh. push in. Get taken out by Noble. Bomb's about oh. to go down. Gets stopped. See some util there off of the raise. 5v4 situation, I mean, they have the utility to push through. Smokes are down. Noble and Clabiella are going to try and push through this. Power gets one as Clabiella gets a trade. Clabiella can't get two. Miso is now putting them in a 3v3 situation. Ultra Lee! Miso gets two. Now it's a 1v1. Ryuk against Brimstone. Against Birds. And Spurs do they here. have a do they have lineups? Molly. Oh my gosh, they have a lineup. Oh, and Ryu played that beautifully. Trying to bait out the brimstone to peek, try and get it to check. And Ryu notices that. Absolute huge reads there on the fake the fake defuse. <laughs> See a little bit of a cat there. This little <laughs> wide. Putting a smiley face there on the cat. Here as we go into Round number nine, Shenandoah up 6-2. Absolute huge round. You yeah. see Shenandoah, you know, they come out of the timeout, they lose the one defense round, but you can see that their confidence isn't fading. Not they're, at still, all. they're still ready to play, and they believe that they have this on lock. Yeah, and on the side of Ringling College, I mean, they have an ult already, right? They got the Thrasher ult. And on the side of Shenandoah, we have a Rain ult and a Cypher ult, which Cypher's ult has improved since I believe last time we've streamed Valorant. Uh, it's able to, I believe, detect live ping now. Um, as they do get Ultra Lee from that ult. I don't believe they're going to get aggressive off of that or try and get that pick, but Co Blue does push into Lamps, just trying to solidify this spot as they get one. Tries to get the gun though. Clive Yella also gets a trade onto Power. Now, Co Blue gets traded by Ryuk. And bombs down. Bombs down. 2v4 there for Ringling College. Noble getting another pick there on the brain. Ryuk gets a pick on the Miso. And Clabiella cleans up the last kill there for Shenandoah as they now go up 7-2. to two Heading into the last round, I believe. Uh, there's actually uh, three more rounds. Three more rounds? Three, three more rounds. So there's... A I can't count. If Ringling College, player, man. <laughs> oh, good. If Ringling College does happen to win out the rest of these rounds, it'll be seven five. But Shenandoah is looking really hot right now. I wouldn't. I, I don't think that Ringling College is, is going to pick up another round. Yeah, you have to think that Ringling kind of losing a little bit of their confidence. You yeah. know, they got that round win off the timeout, but they haven't really been able to do much since. As Shenandoah just keeps winning those very close rounds there. Right, and Ringling are going to be pushing up towards B long. I think they're going to try and get a little bit aggressive, try and utilize that Viper ult. They do flash out. Oh, but the jet is stuck. Ryu does get the wall bang onto Co Blue. And now they're just trying to play their life on the back of their site. Trying to stop the push oh, with that Ares. eye, but going to go down. As we're now, Shenandoah now in a 3v4 oh as power picks up Noble. It's still very doable for Shenandoah, though, as both players are low on the side of Ringling College. Three players are low, actually. As they get one, Miso does get the trade, though. Now, 3v2 situation. Clabiella coming from Hookah. As the Viper goes down, Ultra Lee goes down. 1v2. 1v2 here for Clabiella. 
trying to find, doesn't really know where oh, these players are at. That's massive! Ice Wall gonna give Claviello the information there. Now in a 1v1, picks up oh. a gun, trying to lure out this last player on the side of Ringling. Has an idea where oh. they're at and gets the kill! As Claviello is gonna clutch up the 1v2 to bring the round count to 8-2 in favor of Shenandoah. That was well played by Claviello, making sure that they take their time and play their ones. I mean, what more could you ask for in, in that kind of situation, right? Like, uh, they're not playing together, and Shenandoah recognized that and capitalized off of it. It looked like the round was going in favor of Ringling College, and Shenandoah just not wavering in their strats and keeping trust in each other, which is a huge thing, as we now see the Odin come out here from Noble. Very, very interesting pick there. How uh, do you feel about the Odin coming out? This is going to be a pretty interesting round. Indeed, uh, again, Ringling College are actually on a save round, but they're going to try and have a nice little split push, have two go in towards that bathroom area, a shower area as Noble is just getting ready to rain havoc from Lamps. Looks like Noble's going to go for the wall bangs. Nothing's really going to hit, though. Nobody on the side of Ringling peeking yet, just trying to feel out the round, maybe send some util. As we see Ares Pro with a Marshall out. Yep. Brimstone getting a little aggressive there. Gonna have to reload. Nothing, no, not a lot of aggressiveness on either side of the teams this round. Yeah, I mean, if you're Ringley, you want to make sure that you can try and bait the rotates when you can, try to bait some utility out. I mean, there's a flash right there, and that's going towards something, going towards that great across as power is getting ready to flash out and initiate this push. Got a rotate. Here does realize that, though. Clabiella gets one. Is trying to get the second, does get that second. Three down on the side of Ruling College. Now it's a 1v5 situation. This is this is very tough to do. Yeah, this is going to take probably a and miracle a here. Ryuk feeling out. Left. Probably has an idea of where the last player oh. is. Oh. Misses a few shots. Ares have been able to get one with that Marshall. Pulling out the pistol. Hoping that another one was maybe going to... Chow very quickly, but not going to be ready. Oh! I'm wrong. Ares picks up the second one. Now in a 1v3, but only 13 seconds left. Yeah. It looks like Shenandoah is just going to play safe left. here. Yeah, I mean, Ringling College, they actually leave with a Vandal, which is massive. Again, it was a save round, but that's a little bit more money that you can, you know, put towards the next round. Yeah. Although it is the last round, of course. Um, so... After this, we're going to be switching sides last as Shenandoah looks to try and capitalize on this last push. They do have a potential raise fade combo, though, as Fade's ultimate does bring them down in health, and Raze has a very flashy ult. Yeah, and looks like Ringling liked that last B push, even though they didn't win the round. As they're, looks like they're setting up for another one. Yeah, I think yeah. they, and that's actually a, a smart idea, you know. Make sure that you can pop your utility where you can. You know that two are going to be playing on B for the most part. And Clabiella tries to use their boom bot as some info gathering. They do know that at least one is there. Clabiella going to back up all based off of that info. Is Ringling going to push up B? Oh. But the ult's going to come out from Clabiella. Just trying to get Ringling to back off as they're, they've stopped in their tracks. And Clavio's going to send the shot out. Not going to get anything based off of it. But both teams have a pretty good idea of where each other are at right now. Yeah, as they did already use one smoke on the side of Ringling College. I believe they actually used two. Ooh, Clavio gets one. But Power does get the trade as Power now has their oh. ultimate. Looking to try and just move forward. With this, as you see, the Shenandoah team rotating from A, all of them. And I believe they know this is going to be... A, yep, they go to plan go off. And, they, and Shenandoah has the fade ult again. This yeah. is going to be massive as Ryu gets that first pick. Oh, Ares, good for two! So now 1v2, Ryu going to face, going to try and defuse. Already, Ultra Lee knows exactly where the last player oh, is. Oh. Ares gonna get the kill anyways oh. and gets the second one <laughs> off of the defuse. And now Shenandoah is gonna go <laughs> into offense off of a round that we thought they had locked, but ended up losing 9-3. We gotta be careful the 9-3 curse that here That 9-3 curse is real as Ringling College are now on this defense and defending is typically the better side you want to be on, especially on a map like Bind. It's really hard to really push out there with 
you know, the the Siege, you got the Gecko, the Vipers. I mean, if you're on the Shai Shando, I feel like you just try and hit B here, and I think that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Yeah, maybe play a little aggressive here, try to catch them off guard. Yeah. Just send whatever util you have out already and just see if you can get a pick and just collapse on sight. Right. Noble is looking to just play a little bit slow, try and get a little push going. I feel like th what they need to do is clear out this hookah area. As Ultra Lee does, finds that first pick, and Clab Yellow looking to get really aggressive, trying to just push towards their backside as Reeve picks up that second. Now, Shenandoah in a 5v2 situation. Yeah, very, very good picks there on the side of Shenandoah. Looks like Ringling going to play, planted. try to play a little safe here, see if anybody pushes out. But it looks like Shenandoah also has the same idea. Not really pushing out, playing angles, playing safe. Bombs planted. This is going to oh, be very tough for Ringling, yeah. although Code Blue gets a pick, making it a 2v3. Bomb is down. They're going to have to work a little bit faster than they may want to. They Ryu are. backs off a little bit. You see Ringling now on site. Ryu gets the pick on the jet. Oh. And Cersei takes out the Viper to get the attack round one Rin win there for Shenandoah. Right. And now Sh <laughs> Shenandoah now has a have to a full buy whatever it is they want to buy, you know get as you see noble is choosing this vandal you see cloud yellow choosing this specter and i think you know their game plan is we just hit b again you know? i mean it worked out for you so well last time and you got to think they have all the momentum they have all of the just confidence in the world right now they're probably just going to do the same thing until it gets stopped yeah, I mean, if it's not broke, you know, don't fix it. As we see, Shenandoah is actually playing more spread out this time. Trying to get a little bit more presence around the entire map. They do leave that bomb in the back of their spawn. Just trying to, again, get some sort of information going. Ultra Lee is already pushed up into the Suka area. And we're, we might see this 1v1. Yeah, Ultra Lee just kind of feeling out. Looks like Shenandoah trying to get into very specific positions, waiting to collapse on point. As we see, as we see some other rotation from the other players in Shenandoah, looks like they're going to get ready to hit this B site. And I don't know if Ringling is ready for it. A lot of their player, most of their players are on A site. Oh, and they combine util, but Miso's inside as Clabiella does get that pick and is going to try and be aggressive, especially the smoke. We do see that boombot go off. And it will spot one, but does she know that there's four more people on the other side of this smoke? Looks like she has a feeling as she's going to back up here. Yeah. Trying to play an angle, hoping to pick maybe at least one off. But it looks like Ringling going to push all the way through here. As Power trying to hopefully catch one of Shenandoah's players off guard, but Ultra Lee has the angle on lock. Oh. Notices Power, notices one, notices the other. Going to get <laughs> utilled. <laughs> Here, as a couple trades come in on either side, it's oh. a three v two here. Ryu picks off another one. Ryu gets off a third kill this round. As there's last oh. one last kill there for Ryu, as Shenandoah is now up eleven to three. Ryu absolutely dominating that round for the side of Shenandoah. Yeah, Ryu with a great four piece to solidify that eleventh round for Shenandoah. And if you're on the side of Ringling College, I mean, what do you try and do differently on your defensive round? I, th I feel like it has to be util. Yeah. I feel like, you know, Shenandoah doesn't really feel that pressure mm. that maybe Shenandoah is giving to Ringling off their <laughs> util. And I think that Ringling also, it, it's tough. You look at the top of the, you look at the top of your screen, you see 11-3. Maybe you shake mm. a little bit here as Ryu gets the first blood there on the Koblu. And Shenandoah going to get really aggressive with it here onto the A site. Yeah, Noble planning. I mean, this is a buy round for Ringling as well, so to put it in a 4v3 situation is massive. Ultra Lee is pushed up towards the back of their side on A site as Ultra Lee probably needs to back out. Yep, Power does pick that up, and Birds as well finding that other pick in a 3v3 situation. Yeah, 3v3 situation. Shenandoah does have the advantage. Bomb is down at the moment. Oh, is Claviella going to oh, try to get shots in? No. Power does get the kill on the Claviella. It's a 2v3 here on the side of Shenandoah. Looks like they're ringling, trying to defuse. Oh. Cersei tries to swing it. 
gets taken out along with Noble as Ringling's gonna get the defuse and win this round. Yeah, that was a great uh, retake by Ringling. Playing together, make sure, making sure that you save your utility for where you can. You know, as Sage did put that wall up, uh, Gecko, Gecko's um, little buddy was actually able to get half of that defuse on that bomb, which was actually really big. Uh, you know, being able to get something rather than nothing is, is you know, what you always want to see. It's huge. And this is, that was definitely a round needed for Ringling. Yeah. You don't want to be a match point having to come back from that big of a margin. Yeah. So hopefully now that that round win can give them a little momentum here on the defense side. Uh, completely agree. Noble is going to try and clear out this B-long area as we see the side of Ringling College. They did have three on this B site, but the Vipers trying to just play alive. Fabiola is already pushed up into the shower and Ryuk covers up Clabiella, and I think they're just going to try and explode out towards A. Yep, Clabiella does get that nade out and is trying to just take control where they can as I believe they realize that the rest of their team is just around the B site. Yeah, there were, Ringling College decided to play very heavy on B site as they're now rotating over to A. It's going to be a tough retake here as they're down one person Yep, and Clabiella's already pushed up in their faces. Exactly. Power really needs to figure out how to get out of the smoke. Oh, that was a massive flash. Power does get one, but Ryu gets the trade. Ultra Lee does throw out their eye as Burge gets up one. And Miso also follows up, gets the second. Now, Ringling in a 3v2 situation. Oh. One enemy remaining. Noble gets the pick. Cersei gets another one. 2v1 here for Shenandoah with Bomb down. All they have to do is play time. And Noble gets the pick. It's now 12 to 4 on the side of Shenandoah. It looked like that round was very back and forth there. Yeah. It looked like at first there's no way Shenandoah would lose the round. Ringling gets a few picks, takes it to their favor, and then Shenandoah just finding a double and evening it up, leaving it to their side, and they eventually just get the win. Exactly. Now they're on a timeout. I mean, if you're the side of Ringling College, you, you're getting ready to potentially finish out this map one. It's really difficult for them to try and, you know, compose themselves after just a really outstanding performance by Shenandoah. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you lose the rounds like the one they just did. Yeah. You think that you have it, you're so close, and you're kind of already, like, letting go of your mouse and keyboard, yeah. trying to, like, stretch it out maybe a little bit. Like, okay, I think we just won that round, and then Shenandoah just out of nowhere swings it back in their favor right. with, that two, with those two kills there. And now, all of a sudden, match point, you're down 12-4. Yep. It's kind of a hard hole to get yourself out of. It is a hard hole to get yourself out of. And the other difficult aspect, too, is Shenandoah has three ultimates on their side. And I believe Ring and College have one, if I'm not mistaken. But, again, this is a really outstanding performance on the side of Shenandoah. I mean, Noble is playing outstanding. Ryuk, again, the, yeah. the person I had no idea was actually playing on the team is putting up outstanding numbers, right? I mean, 22 and 10, they're they're gonna just be playing for this last round here, trying to potentially utilize all of their ults. And they have a lot of post plant utility as well as the Brimstone has their ultimate, they have that molly, and they're just gonna look to play this together as a team. Yeah, playing really aggressive right now on the B site. Ringling oh, College, Ares. Ares gets the first pick, which is huge considering most of Ringling's players are on the A side, but you're going to see a few of them start to rotate. Oh. Ultra Lee jumps out of Hookah, going to get the kill there on the Miso. As now, Shenandoah have most of the control here on B site. Two players from Ringling rotating as the bomb goes down. You do already have one player on B site. Going to send some util there from the side oh, of Ringling, but Ryu going to pick one. Ultra Lee goes down. Cersei gets Bird. Ares Pro taking down that's... Power, taking down Ryu. Three kills in that final round as Shenandoah going to win map one, 13 to four. I mean, that was again, basically what I was talking about, right? Like they had the utility, they had the, the firepower. They actually were able to get a pick. Ringling College was actually able to get a pick onto Clabiella, which was huge. But then Shenandoah decided, you know, let's just keep playing this out. Mm -hmm. Let's keep getting aggressive. And they got the trades where they needed to. And unfortunately, Ringling College set up on the wrong side of the site. Shenandoah, Played a very good map there. Yeah. I think their reads, one thing that I really liked was their reads. Yeah. 
they knew they had a feeling it's like maybe there's only I think there's less people on this site. Let's try to play a little aggressive here. Yeah. Get a pick. Everybody pushes in, takes control of bomb, and it's kind of tough when you're down that much, your momentum not in your favor. To retake retake sites like that, very tough, especially when the other team is playing as well as they are. Exactly. And that was well said. I mean, I also think that their their uh, team comp was in my opinion, pretty interesting. I've typically seen, again, people that are teams that play on Bind, they typically like to run the two smokes. Uh, they have that Viper and that Brimstone. So, you know, on uh, if I'm just looking at the paper, right, I feel like Ringling College has a pretty solid setup. Maybe I wouldn't play the Sage. I would probably substitute that out for the Cypher. Um, but again, I mean, it really also comes down to that gunplay, right? And you see Noble having a great game on this first map. You know, we see Reeg also having a great game as well, and we also have the three other members of Shenandoah just being able to clean up those kills, being able to push when needed, maybe even bait themselves a little bit. And I mean, having clutch rounds like this is something that really culminates into, you know, their overall performance. Yeah, Shenandoah really able to convert those close rounds, I think. Taking advantage when they had it, when they had the advantage, just playing aggressive with that, adva with that <laughs> advantage. Yeah. But winning the rounds they probably shouldn't have as well right. you know you're down one two maybe you're down in a two three situation but using your util staying focused and staying confident just able to win those rounds right and something that i really noticed you know at the same time was they they liked to use their utility a lot together right they wanted to make sure that if they're pushing a site they're doing it all at once which in theory works, but at the same time, you know, you want to try and space a lot, space it out a little bit. If you don't have a lot of information on where these teams are, where these players are, it's really hard for you to really commit to a site. It, again, you have to clear out basically every single angle. And Wrangling College probably felt that a little bit as the only piece of information that they got was through that gecko. And yeah. maybe on this map too, I'd, I'd, I like the fade pick. I also like the Sova pick. Sova isn't too bad of a, of a agent, especially on bind. Um, Sky is probably the best one though. Uh, Sky has a flash that basically allows you to hear, or it'll give an audio cue if there is a person there, right? So it's having a flash and an audio cue on where someone is really huge, and being able to have something like that would potentially make the team come better, but most importantly, playing comfortable is what matters, right? So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what the team comp is, as long as you're comfortable on your character, you'll get the job done. Yeah, and it looked like Shenandoah was very comfortable that map. Yeah. Never playing on their heels. No. Always, always looking forward. Yep. And it worked out for them in the end, regardless of team comp, so. Right, and I believe, I'm not too sure what the second map for this Valorant series is gonna be, um, but we do also, again, we have COD coming up against Rowan University, and we also have Rocket League coming up as well. Uh, we're gonna be going against Mount St. Mary's College. And the map is actually going to be split for that map too. So that's going to be fun. I know there's a lot of fast comps going into that map. We have Omen as one of them. Uh, we also have Jet and Rays. I mean, that those are two staple duelists uh, to really have on your team to just create that space. Um, and another really great piece of utility, right? Like being able to gain that space, being able to have that kind of control of the map is huge. Uh, we have potentially a Sky that might be playing in as well. Um, but I don't know, again, team comps change all the time, meta always changes, so. Well, Split is a very small close quarters map. How do you feel about the smaller maps in terms of, you know, a game like Valor? Small maps, honestly, I, I think I like more. Like personally, right, right, I right. kind of like more, but I don't, I don't really know in this situation, you know, sure. we, we tried we tried looking at the team comp and maybe like, oh, maybe this is how they're going to play. And it kind of just all got thrown out the window right. when Shenandoah just started pulling out aces. So it was, right. it's, I feel like it's kind of hard to predict in this mm -hmm. scenario. But I think a map like this is probably going to lean towards Shenandoah's favor, at least right. based off of what we just saw. I mean, again, they played phenomenally. They just dominated on all cylinders, being able to control the map very well, being able to have that kind of information with that fade. I mean, including the Cypher, too. Being able to have that camera just oversee the entire site is vital. Having those trips up and playing around that is really big, too. So maybe you might even see a Cypher as well. I know Cypher is a pretty big one that you uh, tend to see on a map like Split. 
Um, so we're going to be trying to capture all of that soon. Um, Moss, I've been meaning to ask you, what's that on, on the, your side of the desk? Oh, you wanna, you wanna, this. Yeah, you want to talk about this. it a little bit? This is Glitch Energy. Oh, what's yeah. Glitch? Glitch is one of our partners. It's a very wonderful energy drink. Nice. And I, what I believe I'm drinking right now is Smurf Juice. Oh, Smurf. What would Smurf Juice taste like? I mean, I don't think it tastes like a Smurf. Sure. But is it yeah, like I just a know it like tastes a blueberry, good. like a It's kind of, it's very, it's definitely fruity. Fruity? Okay. A little bit fruity, okay. but yeah. Word. Sounds good. I mean, that looks delicious. It looks very refreshing. And I feel like I would want to get myself a, a tub of glitch myself. What's your personal favorite? Um, I honestly don't know yet. I haven't I haven't tried all of them. Mm. But every one I have tried, I do like a lot. Like, there's one flavor named Cracked Sauce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Very I did see good. that. I have tried it. I think it's, that's a pretty good one. I am currently have, I believe, Rainbow Candy, I think is, is the name of that one. Uh, but that one's also really, really good. But as we're getting into the second map of Valorant, we do see that Jet and the Cypher and the Omen like I was talking about. But we're going to be seeing a Breach today, and Breach is actually really good for this kind of map. I mean, being able to have these fast flashes, having a stun and being able to push off of that with that uh, jet is just something that that's a combo we're going to be seeing probably a good amount. And being able to have that cypher in your back pocket, especially on a defensive side, is, is very important. I mean, typically I've also seen people play Sage uh, just so that they could have control of that mid area of the map, being able to wall it off. Um, so it really just depends uh, what this last person power is going to be picking. And they're going to be picking that sky. So this is almost kind of what I was talking about with the agents. I mean, we saw the sky. We see the sage. Cypher we got to take a look at. But one, one that we didn't really, I didn't assume was going to be up there was that Breach. I, I forgot Breach was uh, still a very viable character. But Breach, again, has a lot of impactful utility. Yeah. And going back to the last pick of the yep. draft right there, looks like it looks like they were listening in, you know, to what you were bit. saying about the gecko. Bit. You didn't really like the choice to begin with. You thought they were stronger characters. Yeah. And it looks like they picked what you believe to be a stronger character. Yeah. I mean, Ringling, I believe, has a really solid comp going into this. But again, a lot of meta comps are only good if you understand how to play them, right? So... It really just depends on how they utilize their utility, how they push, how they play with each other. As we might be seeing a very aggressive peak from Ryu. And I believe Ultra Lee is going to try and help support this A push. Yeah. It looks like there's a five a five man push here for the side of Ringling. As Shenado looks to like get a little aggressive. There's only two players on A site. Oh. So... Getting one pick oh, and just massive. getting out is probably the move as Ryuk is going to get that one pick. Going to still play that angle, try to throw the one way. Nothing else going to come through as Ultra Lee looks to maybe get into a gunfight here. Nothing coming through the Omen Smoke yet. Ryuk still holding that angle. Ringling kind of just kind of just chilling there, waiting to see if one of the players of Shenandoah gets a little too aggressive. As we do see a little bit of, we do see two players rotate on the side of Shenandoah. One watching mid. And one trying to come help on A site. Yeah, I mean, Ringling College is playing it's super slow, super still, as Ryu does find another. And if you're on the side of Ringling College, I feel like you might have to try and push something out together, you know, get some kills going. As we do see Ultra Lee low, almost decided to flash his code blue, does pick that up. Ryu gets a little bit of damage, though. And they could potentially be seeing a 3v3, as Calabiola does have a sheriff in heaven, and they're just trying to plant. That Omen Smoke goes through, going to force Claviella to try and reposition mm. and going to get taken out there by Birds. It's now a 3v3 situation for Shenandoah. They're going to have to retake. Ryu going to try to get out, remove the dart as a gunfight now begins on the other side of the site. Yeah. Cersei trying to see if they can get a pick. Down a little health there as Birds mm. is going to take out Ryu. Ares going to take out Cersei. It's now 1v3 here for Noble. Noble going to get one, oh. but going to get traded out there by Koblu. And if you're on the side of Ringling College, you're you're ecstatic, right? I mean, you get that first round win. You're 
going to essentially be set up for the second round if you play your cards right. And they're going to be trying to buy what they can. They're getting that Vandal, as you see there. They're going to try and get the Spectres. And they might just try and hit something fast. I'd like to see maybe a little mid-play. And it looks that's ex like that's exactly what they're setting up for. They're playing, they're playing five-man pushes right now. Yeah. Just essentially playing trades. And they're playing pretty slow, but it worked out there as their patience oh, paid oh. off. As we're going to see oh. very aggressive plays mid here from oh both goodness. sides. Power gets one, gets another. Blue picks up one. Power gets a third. Ryu goes down. Power oh. picks up four. And it's just a massacre down in the middle of the map. And that's a flawless for the side of Ringling College. I mean, yeah, you want to try and do something, especially if you just have pistols, right? And you know that they're going to be buying up a little bit. So doing something like that isn't actually something that isn't something that I'm opposed of, right? I mean, we just have a, a huge push, and we were just trying to get some people down. But unfortunately, Ringling, they were able to shoot back. Yeah, Ringling looks like they got their confidence back in between maps. It looks like they're very comfortable here. Those five-man pushes coming in real handy here. We're going to see some util there from Power. Uh -oh. Ryuk playing this oh. very close. No, I don't think they cleared it. I don't think they know that Ryuk is oh, here. No. Oh, here we go. As Ryuk, trigger discipline, two go down for the side of Ringling. Ryuk, oh I don't my think gosh. He another one's go. Tries to jump in the Omen Smoke to get a pick. Blue picks off Ryuk. Claviella gets all gets the trade as it's now a 2v4 situation for Ringling. Kind of stuck oh. getting funneled there. One enemy and Ares is left alone in that corner as they just gun them down, being able to just secure that first round for Shenandoah. Yeah, that's a huge round win there for Shenandoah. If they went down 0-3, then that's when you got to start trying to think about some other strategies. But yeah. now you're down 1-2. You're feeling, you're feeling, still, you're still feeling pretty good about the map. Yeah, and it looks like Ringling, like what they saw, as they looks like they're going to try to hit another, hit another five-man push on the B. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a bad play at all. I mean, I, personally, maybe I'd like to see the cipher go towards mid, just get a little lurk going. I mean, I feel like something like that would change change the pace up a little bit as Clab Yella does see the team of a Ringling College. And that dog's going through, just trying to get some forward movement. Doesn't get the stun, though. And we see Noble does get a massive wall bang as they're now in a 4v4 situation. They just need to get that bomb down, try and clear that side and get the bomb down. Surzier does try and help that support as Noble and Ultra Lee get their picks. Bomb is planted, though. Ultra Lee has a beautiful flash, and Surzier picks it up for the two-piece, solidifying that second round. Absolutely huge round there out of Surzier. Making even it up now, the rounds now it's 2 2. Yeah, very you're, you're feeling a little bit better, feeling good. It's evened out, and yeah, seriously, you're just not missing shots, right? And I mean, being able to have this kind of firepower, right? Just having that kind of coordination. I mean, we saw Ringling almost take it there, but we just there's a little gap in their smoke, just a, and that little gap could go a long way, and you saw it as I believe the side of Shenandoah now might be looking to get a little bit aggressive towards A. I mean, we're going to be seeing this nice mid-push as Labiel throws out that eye, just getting some sort of information, and the side of Ringling College going to try and push up this mid here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get pretty aggressive up mid, but it looks like Shenandoah is reading it here. Oh, we have a few flash. players, but a huge flash comes in from Ringling. Oh, nobody's oh, looking oh. for Ryu as four go down on the side of Ringling. One person left. Yeah. Not much you could do in this situation as all five players of Shenandoah are just chasing you down. Yeah, they're, they're kill hungry. They want to try and get this round over with. You see Claviello trying to get that pick, and she does. As That's a flawless round for Shenandoah. Huge read there. You, you back him off with the eye. And then you immediately read the fact they're going to try to rotate through mid. Yep. Nobody looks for Ryuk there. Able to get a pick. And I believe Cersei got a, got two picks there as well. Yeah. Down in mid. And just a very good round from Shenandoah. And both teams have three ults. I mean, the side of Ringling College is pretty close to one as well as the side of Shenandoah. And they might look to try and use some ultimates here. I mean... It, 
you have the Sky ult, which is massive, and they're looking to try and push aggressive out towards this A. Dog does go out. Ryuk is going to get aggressive here, trying to get at least one. Does get one power, though, and Miso picking up two, putting them in that 4v3 situation as the Sky ult is now trying to seek out the other players. Noble is trying to push up towards this heaven area. Trying to regroup with Clabiella. They're now in a 3v3 situation. Yeah, huge Ooh, picks there. Power. As Power gets another one on the Cersei here. 2v3 here for Shenandoah. Bomb is down. Looks like Noble and Clabiella gonna try to take this 2v1 here onto Power. As they're about to swing together. Uh -oh. Clabiella uh -oh, sends uh -oh. the eye. Power gets the pick on the yep. both of them. As Ringling takes round number six and this is something different we we saw that early on in this in this first map you know it was a little bit one-sided but we saw, are starting to see a pretty even game as ringling college brings it to a 3-3 yes they're playing i feel like ringling just looks a lot more comfortable on this map yeah than they did on the last map and i feel like these five person push uh pushes shenandoah Split defenses and Ringling just taking advantage of the number game here. Yep. As they're about to do another five man push here onto A oh, side as Ares, Ares gets the pick on the Claviella. Cersei, you're gonna try to get some info. Not oh, gonna get Miso. much as Miso's gonna take Cersei out. It's now a 3v5 as Bomb is going down for Ringling. Now they have control of heaven. Ryuk is just trying to clear this out. And he pushes into the smoke. Oh, Miso is good for one. Needs to try and play their life. Just keep them at bay. Ultra Lee does go down by Miso. Miso has three kills on to their name as Noble is going to just try and spam some bullets through that smoke. Get some sort of damage off. But they know exactly where he is. Bombs down. I believe that's a 4-3 for Ringling College. Yeah, that's going to... There's pretty much no chance here for no. Noble to be able to take this round. Not but he's going to take out power... Gets traded out by Ares. Now Ringling College up 4-3. Yep. This is a very close map. It is. I mean, luckily they were able to get that first pick, or that, that only pick in, in that round. Noble, massive props, you know, trying to get that, uh, the buying, the credits down to where, you know, it's harder for them to full buy. But, I mean, Ringling College, I believe, have three straight rounds, if I'm not mistaken. They were down 2-3. Oh, they have two straight rounds. Two I'm straight rounds there from the side of Ringling. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and here as we see Ringling, for the first time, I believe, split up as they sent one A and the rest of their players are going B. Mm. As Shenandoah going to try to pinch through mid here. And yeah. I don't know if Ringling's going to read it here as Ryuk gets the op kill onto power. Cersei is going to get the information. And Ringling going to start the push here onto B. Few shots put down there from Claviella. Not gonna get anything, but Cersei is gonna oh! pick up three. As there's now one player remaining. Wow. As Noble picks up Ares and Shenandoah has tied the map here 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, again, that cipher is so tough to just break through, especially if you're on that B site. I mean, being able to set up those trip wires and play around your cages are super, super crucial. And that's exactly what you saw there. And on the side of Shenandoah, we get to see an op as Ryuk is looking to try and get aggressive towards this middle area of the map. Ringling College is playing a much closer game, and I think a better game too. Yeah, like I said, they feel a lot more comfortable. They're playing a lot more together this time around. You mm -hmm. mentioned last map that they were kind of just taking one-on-one -on -one oh. gunfights here. As we see triggered. Ringling getting ready to push on to B site, we see Shenandoah pinching uh -oh, from behind uh -oh. as we see Ryu looking the cross, gonna Passive. get a pick on the power with the op. Looking for another one. Not getting peaked just yet. Thanks. Ringling a little scared. Claviola's gonna pick up oh. one. Birds and Ares get two. It's now a 3v3. Bomb's not down yet though for the side of Ringling. I know exactly. As Ultra Lee gonna go heaven here. Oh. Spots the bomb oh, plant, huge. gonna be able to take him down. That's a huge pick there for Ultra Lee. Looking for the second one. It's a now 3v2 here for Shenandoah. Bird's gonna try to get the plant down. They get this plant down, that's good. There we go, we got the plant down, 1v3 situation. This is gonna be tough though, as Ares does get that tripwire. They know that they're defusing. This flash is gonna come out. Ultra Lee 
does go down though, and the bomb is halfway. Oh, that's a wonderful ult to use. Just reloading, making sure that they don't have Gotta any read. less bullets. Oh, they're reading Playing this. ring around the rosy with each other. 1v1, just opting to go for the, the defuse. Off. Is he going to get it? Oh. He does! The sneaky defuse there from Cersei are going to get Shenandoah the round advantage. Now 5-4. That was a massive and risky play. Sometimes we don't know if you're going to be defusing. We hear the audio cue in Valorant. Uh, and... There's no tax printing. No. Not able <laughs> to get to that bomb check. Just a little bit too far away when Cersei tries to get the... Goes for the defuse there. Yeah. Bringing it to half earlier on in that round. A little, well, not too much earlier, but a little earlier. Really helped him there. And Shinodo was able to pick up the round. Ryuk is going to try and be aggressive again and towards this area here as they set up very aggressively, but I believe that the side of Ruling College is just trying to push out. Does get a massive stun. Ultra Lee gets two. Realizes there's a third in the cubby. Oh, gets a fourth. Can they get a fifth? Or a fourth? One enemy remains. Oops. <laughs> here is it's now 1v4 for Ringling. <laughs> Ryu gonna take out Code Blue as Shenandoah wins their second or third straight round? Yeah. I, hey, I believe third straight round, they were down 3-4. I just got a little discombobulated. Yeah, both of us having a very hard time counting today. Yeah. You know, I think we play a little too much COD, but... I wouldn't say we play too much COD. I just think we're not in the right... We're not in the right headspace right now. You gotta get in the right headspace. Gotta get in the right headspace. But we do see Shenandoah bringing it back, going up two rounds, which is huge. Being able to solidify that last round. And let's talk about that little sneaky defuse. I mean, that 1v1 situation is really tough to be in. And if you're on the side of Shenandoah, you have no idea what's going to happen. But you have to trust your gut. And they, they got that round clinical. I believe the other player must have thought that maybe the other player played too much Halo. As we, uh, maybe some people got that joke. Halo kids, don't defuse. Jeez. But looks like a little too far away. They were playing Ring Around Rosie there they for were. a little bit. And I think I think that Cersei just had enough of that at that point. It was like, I'm just going to defuse. Yeah. There's no reason not to defuse. I mean, and then that last round, Ultra Lee, that was a great stun. Being able to stun majority of the team. And then gets three massive picks. And they were basically out on that site. But unfortunately, the stun is too powerful. Mm -hmm. Being able to have that kind of control. And we're going to be going into this... Round 11. Round 11 with Shenandoah up two rounds, six to four. And Ringling opting to go for a B push here, but it looks like Shenandoah may get a little aggressive here. Mm. As the op shot not gonna go through from Claviella. Ares able to take out Claviello there, as it's now a 5v4. And oh. they're gonna start pushing through mid here. Yep. As we see some util usage onto B site. Oh, I don't, oh, that's a great wall to have up. Oh, they don't clear that Raptors though. Noble is good for one as they do get the trade on for Cersei. Code Blue also gets Ultra Lee and Cersei at the same time. 3v1 for Ringling College. Yeah, Ryuk in a very tough situation here. Bomb goes down. Yeah. Full health though. Don't like, this is possible. You're just gonna have to have perfect reads here. As it looks like Ryuk going to opt to push back through spawn. Looking for that jet player. Just going to opt to go heaven instead. Oh. Ares looking. Oh no. The timing. No. The timing going through. Oh. Ryuk spots Ares. Has info at least one person. Just going to opt to go for the defuse again. Think Ryuk gonna get half. gets the half. Oh. Not going to be able to swing to get the kill onto power. But that was a, that was a really nice attempt there. From side of Shenandoah. The yeah and... This is way closer than that map one as it is currently 6-5. We could potentially see a 6-6 half here. Yeah, and that honestly be a more entertaining game to watch. I'm excited for that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> here is it's now 6-5. Here is Ringling College going to opt to go for an A hit. You and they the have three ults. They have three, they they have have three, ults, three ults here as... Looks like they're not Shenandoah not playing as aggressive the, as they usually were. Is Ryuk up top heaven? I think the play here is Ultra Lee just plays their life and they just use that ult. Yeah, Ares Pro trying to get some info there on the heaven. Ryuk just playing an angle here. They have a feeling that birds may be outside, but that smoke is gonna 
Not the info. Oh, but Ryu you... going to snap on the birds. Gets the kill. Now 4v4. Oh. Ryu looking for another pick. Not Archer... going to find anything just yet. Yeah, Ultra Lee is down, so they don't have that ult to push through. And Noble is starting to get aggressive. Ryu drops from heaven, gets one, and Noble also finds another. 2v2 situation. Ringling College does have a resurrection if Miso can get to him, but they can't. Ryu does get three. As now we're just hoping for Koa Blue. Oh! Shenandoah opting for the oh defuse. Gosh. Gonna hop off of it. Oh! And Koa Blue reads the swing, gets the kill on the Ryu, saves the round for Ringling College. As the ma as map number two is tied six six, oh, that was a great first half for Shenandoah Valorant. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these short break. I think they're playing five man pushes right now. Yeah, just essentially playing trades, and they're playing pretty slow. But it worked out there as their patience oh, paid oh. off. As we're going to see, oh. very aggressive plays mid here for oh both goodness. sides. Power gets one. Gets another. Blue picks up one. Power gets a third. Ryu goes down. Power <laughs> very close. No, I don't think they cleared it. I don't think they know that Ryu is oh, here. No. Oh, here we go. As Ryu does try and help that support as Noble and Ultra Lee get their picks. Bomb is planted though. Ultra Lee has a beautiful flash and Sergio picks it up here. Oh, they have a few players, but a huge flash comes in from Ringling. Oh, nobody's oh. looking oh. for Ryu as four goes on to B. Few shots put down there from Clabiella. Not gonna get anything, but Cersei is gonna oh. pick up three. As there's now one player remaining. Wow. As Noble picks up Ares. He's gonna go heaven here. Oh. Spots the bomb oh, plant. Huge. Gonna be able to take him down. That's a huge pick there for, for the, the DPS. Top. Is he gonna? And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Great first half that we saw from uh, from Valorant. I mean, yeah. absolutely yep. phenomenal start. Uh, you can't ask for much more than that. And we are getting right back into the action here. Now we have Shenandoah with the bomb down. Noble trying to find one is going to fall to Koblu. And now we have Claviella trying to hold the angle, see if they can get that last little kill. And now it is one all but remaining. one left for Ringling College. And this Omen doing all they can to keep in the fight here. Yeah, trying to do everything they can. Ultra League getting away there, but the Flash is going to come through and the Cypher is going to pick up the kill there, uh, keeping the lead in favor of Shenandoah here. Uh, interested to see what buys will come through from both sides. Of course, that is only the first round um, out of the half, so probably Indeed. some standard stuff, some sheriffs here and there, maybe some ghosts, yeah. um, specters, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, no, and it's going to be interesting to see how Shenandoah changes up their strategy now that they're on the attacker side. Uh, and same goes for uh, Ringling College as well, seeing yep. how they change up their strat uh, with this fairly aggressive uh, team that they've uh, kind of put together. We saw them try and rush a lot of the sites uh, early on uh, in a group and see if they take a more conservative approach while defending or if they try and push the initiative and force Shenandoah into uncomfortable uh, positions. Yeah, we see Shenandoah. They're trying to get a quick pick through mid there, but rotating over towards Garage, go going through towards B, but Cypher has the setup there. They're going to have to be careful. Uh, the Reyna will get caught there, and Cypher will take out Ryuk. The jet goes down. Ultra Lee will follow two picks right away for Ringling. Yeah, it, uh, Shenandoah falls right into the trap of Ringling College. I mean, absolutely just phenomenal job by the Cypher to get that set up in the position. Be ready for Shenandoah, and they, st they stand to the test of time, essentially, in that short little bit of time. Uh, and absolutely just a great job of, of hunkering down and really just getting pick after pick. Uh, and u utilizing their utility to the best of their ability. Yeah, well, we see the rotate now coming through for Shenandoah. They s maintain possession of the bomb and can rotate to A and get a plant down. Ringling is going to have to answer, but the plant is going to be able to go through here with 30 seconds left in the round. So now Ringling kind of funneling back through their spawn area, but Reyna's in a good position to catch them off guards perhaps, but they're going to go up towards Heaven instead. Yeah, and that Cypher utility is up there in Heaven. They do deal with it, but now they know where he is. Clabiella able to find one, and now Shenandoah is closing in on the bomb like the predators they are. However, 
or sorry, that's Ringling closing in on the bomb as the Predators they are. And Koblu is going to take out Clabiella, and now it's a 1v1. But Shenandoah says, we will take that round. And absolutely just phenomenal 1v1 right there by the Cypher to pick up the round win for Shenandoah and extend their lead to two rounds. Yeah, I mean, a good rotation. They're coming out from Shenandoah. They recognize they lose the fight in Garage there, and they're like, okay, we're going to pull off that push there, rotate over to A site. And in a 2v3 situation, that early pick there by that Reyna, uh, able to really swing tides back into Shenandoah's favor. 1v1 gunfights going in favor of Shenandoah and they're towards the end of that round. Yeah, and right now with the two, winning two in a row really for Shenandoah is a, phen is a phenomenal start uh, yep. to the attacker side, which mm -hmm. is a little harder to do uh, in, in comparison to Defender. So an absolutely flying start for Shenandoah. And we are getting into Rocket League. It is already one to one. Uh, which is just absolutely wild as we start things off here with only 30 seconds into the game. Uh, and right now, this Shenandoah team not facing an easy opponent right now. Yeah, Mount St. Mary's is not a pushover uh, school here, especially when it comes to Rocket League. Shenandoah, however, have been performing very well. Uh, Alim getting good clears there. Kiazi and Mango, the tandem there on the attack. Uh, really positive stuff coming through as Ryuk is going to pick up a kill on the other side here in Valorant. 5v4, 45 seconds left to plant this bomb that Breach uh, is in possession of right now. Yeah, and right now, Kiazi trying to push the initiative for Shenandoah on the Rocket League side. Not quite able to do anything, and right as I say that, Koblu picks up a double for Ringling, and now Klabiella is able to find a pick, but it's two for one, which is not the amount that you want if you are Shenandoah. Shot on net, meanwhile, from Mount St. Mary's, not quite able to find anything. If we take a look over at the Valorant side, it is a 3v2, and of course, right as I go to say something, we miss a goal in Rocket League. Yeah, Fuzzy able to follow up that hit there on that post, able to really recover and salvage that shot there in the setup, but Shenandoah is now planting the bomb here over on A site. Klebiel, Kle Klebiela, excuse me, is able to get up the get the pick here in heaven and win the third round in a row on attack here for Shenandoah. Yeah, and really just a great job there of, of executing game plan. Um, as we see a timeout uh, coming in. So get some Rocket League action, hopefully. Right. Um, but on the, on the uh, Rocket League side, I think I, I'm, I'm predicting a, a game five in this one. Both teams, I yep. think, are very close in skill level uh, and, and, and talent. Um, and, and what we're seeing here to start things off, it's a very close game, back and forth. Yeah, right. Mango having a good aerial, but misses the tap. They're unable to do anything with the open net. Kiazi, however, will meet the ball in the air, shooting it back towards Mount St. Mary's uh, side. But really, no follow-up there. No boost available for Mango after he misses that aerial. But Mango, again, trying to redeem himself. A limb with the pass Whoa. off of Mount St. Mary's player. A limb tying it up here with 2.44 to go, two apiece. Just like he drew it up, he knew the ball would be right there. And... It takes a, uh, a favorable bounce off of Mount St. Mary's player, but it goes in the back of the net. But still, great job to have have the insight to send that ball towards goal. And then uh, Mount St. Mary's just says, yeah, we'll help you guys out on this one. Uh, tie game up here 2-2 two -two with three or 2-30 left to go. Yeah, Mango doing a good job here, keeping the ball over in St. Mary's uh, side of the pitch here. A limb clears back and forth. Mango in a good position, but a good block there by McHayden, able to keep the ball out of the net, keeping it in a close game, but Kiazi is going to follow up from mid there. Really well executed in the communication there from Shenandoah. You can tell they were all on the same page. Yeah, and really just flooding that net, not letting Mount St. Mary's get that ball out of there. Give them a chance to breathe. Shenandoah pushing the initiative and absolutely pressing Mount St. Mary's and it causes a defensive error that led to a goal. Meanwhile, on the other end, on the other end, Mount St. Mary is able to execute a sloppy kickoff from Shenandoah, and we are right back to square one, Ben. Yeah, Elim kind of missing that hit off of the kickoff. That was kind of uh, a 50-50 shot there from Mango. No one able to get back to the goal fast enough. Going for those full boosts in the corners was Kiazi, and really King Julian just able to find that open net and tie it up with two minutes to go here in game one uh, of a potential five-game series. This is the best of five here uh, for the Mace Rocket League um, uh, uh, season here. 
Um, and Kiazi right now doing a good job keeping it in Mount St. Mary's side. Good clear or cross rather uh, in front of the goal there, but no follow up able to come through from Shenandoah at that time. Kiazi though keeping it in favor of his teammates. Yeah, and I think right now it's really just each team trying to force uh, force the initiative and, and cause the other teams to make the mistakes. And as, as we see, Shenandoah tries to get Mount St. Mary's out of rotation. It doesn't quite work. However, they're still able uh, to to keep this, this ball in the other end of the pitch. And right now it's working out well in their favor. I mean, they are just pelting this goal. Kiazi with a great shot. An even better save there by Fuzzy. And now it's a counterattack for Mount St. Mary's, and it's going to lead to a goal. King Julian puts it in the back of the net to give Mount St. Mary's their one goal advantage right back to him. Yeah, Mango there trying to do everything he can. The backflip not able to get enough momentum and enough really contact on that ball to be able to save that one. 4-3 now in favor of Mount St. Mary's and Fuzzy with a huge kickoff, Ooh. but the shot goes just wide off of the post there. McHayden will recover and set the ball up for King Julian, but Mango is there to disrupt, and now it is time for Shenandoah to try to make something happen, but Elim missing the ball there, able to come back and get it, and Kiazi with a huge clear King Julian coming back for the defense on the side of Mount St. Mary's, but with 50 seconds left, Shenandoah needs to find something fast. Yeah, they really do. And Mount St. Mary's was so close to, to increasing their lead by an extra goal. Uh, unfortunately, it went just outside of the net. Uh, and as I say that, Mount St. Mary's trying to mount a counterattack. Has the ball towards the end of Shenandoah, but they can't quite get the last little touch. Great defense there by Shenandoah. And now they are on the counterattack. Kiazi sends the ball up perfectly. Can anyone find it? No, they can't. And a shot is right back there from Mango, but it doesn't find the frame of the goal. And now that is an unfortunate bounce right there for Shenandoah. Great one, though, for Mount St. Mary's and another goal for them. And yeah. I think this game one is fairly solidly in the hands of Mount St. Mary's. Elim trying to make something happen with that aerial, but unable to connect. As we go now to the split box here, Valorant uh, finding a commanding lead here. 11-6 uh, here on the series uh, or the round, well, match? I think this is the match game total, I guess. Uh, I guess... Uh, in the in game because it's game one, game That's two, game fair, three. Yeah. yeah. So round uh, round seventeen or no, this is eighteen technically because you go mm -hmm. up one based on the math. Yep, yep. Mathin, my my math's mathin right now. But Fabiello <laughs> able to find one and a second. Great job to crouch right under where they were shooting. Uh, great great instinct there. Noble's gonna plant the bomb down, and now it is a five v one for Shenandoah. Uh, in favor of Shenandoah against Ringling with Bomb down. This is going to be a massive, massive ask for the Jet on Ringling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Code Blue able to get the Reyna, but with four still alive on the side of Shenandoah, not a whole lot really that Code Blue can really do here. If he can pick off another one, he is able to do so. Ryuk will go down. 3v1 situation for the Jet here. Will they be able to pull it off? I don't, there's not enough time left on the bomb, unfortunately. Koblu, though, great job getting two picks. Really try and mess up Shenandoah's economy. However, yep. now it is a game point here. Spike goes off. See if Koblu can get one more uh, pick and Noble. Match point. Excuse me, will actually find the kill to end yep. things off. So that's almost a perfect round for Shenandoah, minus the uh, two people at the end that got picked, but. Still, you're now match point in game one. Yep. It, you can't ask for much more if, if you're Shenandoah. Yeah, on the attacking side, six rounds in a row going in Shenandoah's favor, just rolling uh, right now. Koblu has the operator, however, if he's able to get a pick off early in this round, that yeah, could true. be huge for a ringling on the defensive side. But with four commit mid trying to pick off this Sage, the wall will go out. But Shenandoah just forcing their way in. Yeah, and right now Shenandoah knows that they have the utility, knows that they have the weapons to do exactly what they're doing, just running at them full speed. Ryuk is going to be able to find a kill onto the Cypher. And now that's the heal and support down. Clabiella trying to escape with the Reyna orb is going to be able to do so. Gets the ultimate noble bomb down. And now it is all of a sudden a 2v5 in favor of Shenandoah. And if you have... 
you can't sit on that sky ult if you're ringling. You need to use that to find out where they are. Because right now, Koblu is doing everything they can to keep ringling in this game. 1v3 situation again, but Ultraly in the perfect position to save the day there uh, and stop the momentum from that round. Uh, and really, game one now yeah. on split to yeah. uh, Shenandoah. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal play there by SU. Game a, two, excuse me. A, a, a great just... Uh, I'm trying I'm trying to find a way to put this in the words. It, it was as if once the sides switched, they just turned it on, they flipped the switch, and yep. were able to really push the initiative uh, and had great team play overall and a phenomenal, phenomenal round and game win there for Shenandoah Valorant. But that's enough about Valorant. We are back at it with Rocket League. Game one going in favor of Mount St. Mary's, if you all missed it. And Shenandoah right now uh, is locked in, in, in a deadlock between these two teams. Yeah, King Julian getting the disrupt there. Mango trying to go across uh, the pitch there over to Kiazi, but unable to squeeze that ball through that tight window. Again, shots on goal here for Mount St. Mary's. The clears not coming through into great effect here from Shenandoah. King Julian, Fuzzy, and McCaden doing a great job. A limb able to save goal. that one. I thought that was going to be a goal. That looked very, very close, but Mount St. Mary's not able to squeeze it in there. Two huge whiffs uh, there from both sides, but still full possession by Mount St. Mary's. The tap will come through, but Mango is going to come from the right side, left side, excuse me, uh, save the day for uh, Shenandoah, keeping this 0-0 down one in the series with two minutes left to go. Yeah, and I thought for sure we had a goal coming through there, but a couple of unfortunate misses uh, and, and great defensive play by Shenandoah keeps this deadlocked here at nil-nil, and we're gonna see if Shenandoah can now get the ball out of their own end of the field, and that ball almost goes in, somehow does it. Mount St. Mary's' follow-up doesn't quite have the angle and the power to send it through the back of the net. Kiazi with great defense, and right now Shenandoah is doing everything they can to keep this ball out of the back of the net, and Mount St. Mary's is throwing everything at Shenandoah, and they're just standing tall in, in the face of danger. Yeah, and that's just the thing right now, though. Shenandoah playing a lot of defense, not able to develop uh, the offensive strategies that they're usually really good at. Mango able to get to that ball before Mount St. Mary's is able to. And, and really, the offensive power that we've seen from Shenandoah in the past mm -hmm. has kind of been stunted here so far by Mount St. Mary's clears. Yeah. Yeah, no, it really has. And one thing I will say that Shenandoah has uh, started to do well is adjust to the pressure by Mount St. Mary's, and that allows them to get out on offense and get a couple of attacks in. But right now, Mount St. Mary's just seems fully in control uh, from, from the word go. And now we see double demos out by Shenandoah, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Eliminate is able to still just... Get an attack off. Mango tries to go for a tap off the ceiling, and it's a pass to Kiyasi for the first goal. And we have waited four minutes and 14 <laughs> seconds for a goal here in game number two, and it has finally come through. And Shenandoah now leads 1-0 here in game number two. Yeah, and, and really, that's all a limb right there, being able to get that clear after the double demo, being able to keep that ball over in Mount St. Mary's side. The respawns coming through from Mango and Kiazi, able to follow up on the clear from Elim was really just perfection. 30 seconds left now for Mount St. Mary's to try to tie it up. Will he be able to fuzzy with a huge save? But follow-ups back and forth. Mango, Kiazi, Elim coming in, unable to make it in time. But Kiazi doing a great job keeping the ball kind of in mid at midfield in towards Mount St. Mary's part of the pitch. Yeah, no, and a really phenomenal job here by Shenandoah to not let Mount St. Mary's set up. However, you have to be careful to not overextend too much here as time is winding down. Five seconds, this one shot on net. Mango is able to stop it. Now, Eliminate with the counterattack, tries to lift it over the goalie. Ball falls on the ground, though, and Shenandoah is your game number two winner here at 1-1. One one. Yeah, tying it up there in a very, very close game number two. 1-0 yeah. victory there for Shenandoah. Really uh, an out of the blue almost goal right. Two demos yeah. going in favor of Mount St. Mary's. You would 
realistically think, hey, Mount St. Mary's, this is a goal all the way. But Elim doing a great job carrying that ball back over to Mount St. Mary's side, setting up Mango and Kiazi for the goal. Yeah, and it, the, the thing, if you do a double demo, you have to be careful of that one other person doing exactly what yep. uh, Eliminate did. Yep. And that's be able to exploit the the out of position, the, the mispositioning of... Right. Uh, of your teammates essentially mm -hmm. after they go for their, for those demos and I think it's just a phenomenal recovery there by Shenandoah to recognize that Mount St. Mary's was out of place because of this mm -hmm. and now we're able to punish that mistake with a goal yep. and it works out in their favor as they take game number two and now tied up 1-1 back to square one. Yeah, kickoff in favor of Mount St. Mary's on that one. King Julian getting a demo onto Mango. A time to strike possibly for Mount St. Mary's. And they will be able to. McHayden is in position uh, to really follow up on. Uh, <laughs> that was really just all him there. Elim unable to get that clear. And Kiazi just barely under that ball as it shot kind of towards the middle of that net. Yeah, it really just an odd mistake there by Shenandoah. We don't see that too often, of course. No, no team is perfect. Everyone's got to make a mistake at some point. But just a, a strange lack of communication, I feel like, from Shenandoah right there. Because if Eliminate misses that there, but you have Mago in goal, you should be able to clear that right out. Yep. So I think it's just a miscommunication and an unfortunate miss on Eliminate's end. Uh, so Shenandoah, as opposed to last game, we have a goal very early here in game number three. Yep. Yeah, Kiazi going down to another demo as well. King Julian kind of hunting the Shenandoah players here, trying to find these demos, trying to get these number advantages. A limb goes down again. Fuzzy is going to be able to follow up on that uh, rotation, not fast enough coming through from Shenandoah. And really, off of that demo alone, that set up the goal for Mount St. Mary's to jump up to a quick 2-0 lead. Yeah, in Mount St. Mary's playing this game three, super aggressive. We see them already going for several demos to start things off here. And it's paid off very well. I mean, they're they're out to a two-goal lead in under a minute, uh, which is absolutely incredible compared to the last game where we had <laughs> one goal in an entire five-minute game, uh, and none of them were from Mount St. Mary's. So just a great job of Mount St. Mary's to recognize what went wrong for them uh, and, and what they could change here heading into game uh, number three. And it's worked out so far in their favor, but still plenty of time left on this clock for both teams. Yeah, and with the clear there, kind of towards Mango's end, but McHayden is there to get the clear back in favor of Mount St. Mary's. The aggression that Mount St. Mary's has been able to put on Shenandoah offensively has been really overwhelming almost. McHayden and Fuzzy able to make some magic happen in that left corner there, trying to get that clear. Mango just a step behind McHayden in that rotation to get that ball and catch that ball. A 3-0 now for Mount St. Mary's. Yeah, and Shenandoah really just looks out of rotation and lost right now. Uh, the the defense isn't the best right now, uh, as, as as you can probably see from the scoreline, but it's just the rotations as well from it. Uh, it it's completely different than, than what we saw in the first two games, because we saw a very solid and very stout defense, and we can't haven't really seen that at all here in game number three, but Again, this is why it's best of five. Um, plenty of, there's still plenty of time as well. We're, we're not even halfway through this game number three. Yep. So it, if Mount St. Mary's can score three goals in one half, then theoretically Shenandoah can do it in one half as well. Exactly, yeah. That's the thing about Rocket League that people often forget is how quickly goals yes. can be scored. It, it can really be, what, fastest goals, like five seconds almost off kickoff. I, it goes right that. into that net. Less yeah, that. probably less. They just need to find these angles, maybe get some demos of their own, disrupting the rotations yeah. of King Julian um, and Fuzzy especially will help them get these angles and really be able to set up these power plays that they've been searching for all game. Yeah, really, uh, I, I, I like the idea that Shenandoah needs to get more aggressive, go for these demos, because we, we saw Mount St. Mary's do it, and it benefited them very well with three goals. Um, and now they've kind of backed off off that. So now if you're Shenandoah, you can afford to get aggressive, afford to push the initiative. You just have to be careful to not overextend and, and get out of the position. And we see a demo right there by Elim, but no one is there to follow it up. Kiasi tries to get a touch on the ball, but not really able to do so. Mango with a shot on net, but that's going to get saved. 
uh, out of the air by Fuzzy. But now Shenandoah starting to see signs of life in their attack as they try and push the initiative. Yeah, Demo's coming back and forth, traded across the board here between Mount St. Mary's and Shenandoah. Mango off the wall, whoever able to salvage a missed ball there from Mount St. Mary's, making the score within two. Yeah, and a big, big goal there for Shenandoah. Still plenty of time left on the clock, and now you're only two goals down. The comeback is a very possible thing right now, and if you're Mount St. Mary's, that little thought in the back of your mind is starting to eat its way to the front that there's a chance you blow this three-goal lead. Kiazi not able to, to get the angle. Great recovery there by Mount St. Mary's after a defensive mistake. Almost leads to another Shenandoah goal. Yeah, McHayden just able to get in that right position to fall right on top of that ball, but passes across the board. McHayden trying to get another clear. Mango will meet it in the air, but he is out of boost, unable to follow up, and the clear will now come through from Mount St. Mary's. Shot on goal, but Kiazi in position. Fuzzy gets the demo, but another shot coming across. But McHayden just there that much faster, ready on that rotation, ready on defense to get that clear. 50 seconds left. Demos coming across the board for Shenandoah, but they can't get the angle. A limb if he can make it in time, but no, McHayden off of the respawn, able to get that clear back into Shenandoah's side. And it's like someone just flipped the switch to overdrive for both these teams. They are playing at a much faster rate. Yep. Of course, I have a feeling that's because of the time winding down. Uh, speaking of, 30 seconds left in this game. But both teams just flew out of the gate all of a sudden. It's like they decided, okay, we're going to make this go super fast. We see Mango with a flip reset onto the ball. Not quite able to find the back of the net. Eliminate trying to get something to work for his team and not able to do so. And now Shenandoah running out of time. A shot on net does end up getting saved. And with time winding down, it, Mount St. Mary's able to hold up solid against this Shenandoah attack to end things here with a 3-1 scoreline. And Mount St. Mary's will take game number three and make the series a 2-1 in favor of them. Yep, match point now for Mount St. Mary's. Yep. And and really, Mount St. Mary's just so aggressive on their yes. demos and their displacements, yeah. right? Shenandoah not able to mass them or trade them yep. back in their favor to really even it up. And that is really what almost solidified two goals there for yeah. Mount St. Mary's in that match. Being able to get those demos is huge for uh, Mount St. Mary's and something that Shenandoah needs to be a little bit more uh, aware of of their yeah. pathing and their positioning that Mount St. Mary's is kind of matching and going along with. Yeah, no, it, it it's 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 part of Rocket League as, as a game. You have to constantly adjust your tempo, adjust what the other team is doing. Mm -hmm. Of course, that can be said about pretty much every other eSport that there is. You always have yep. to adjust based on what the other team is doing. Mm -hmm. But I think Mount St. Mary's right there just did a great job of just like you said, being aggressive, going for these demos, getting yep. Shenandoah out of rotation, out of position. And we saw it early, the defensive mistakes for Shenandoah is what cost them that game. Yep. Uh, the, the early goal easily could have been prevented. I don't even think there was a demo on that. I mm -hmm. think it was just miscommunication. Yep. Uh, but then the second one and third were demos and Mount St. Mary's being aggressive. So yep. I think it, it's honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Shenandoah does the same strat coming out of the gates here as Kiazi tries to go for an early kickoff but gets met and that ball goes nowhere <laughs> to start things <laughs> off. Yeah, an equal kickoff there for both sides. The clear though coming in favor of Shenandoah and really being able to keep it in that side of the pitch on Mount St. Mary's side. Kiazi shooting it off of the roof there but no one there to follow up on the side of Shenandoah. I'd love to see some more aggression coming through uh, from Shenandoah's side here, trying to displace some pathings and some movements. Being able to get to that ball faster is what's going to make a difference. But instead, Fuzzy is going to find the demo instead and really halt Shenandoah's offensive uh, aggression there on that push. And Shenandoah should have picked up a goal right there. An unfortunate miss from SU. A wide open net and just, I think it was barely a miss by, I think, Mango. I could be wrong in that aspect, but they had the wide open net from the demo. The player on Mount St. Mary's was out of position because they went for that demo. Uh, and unfortunately, not able to capitalize on that, but you need to try and not make mistakes like that. And Mount St. Mary's is able to capitalize on a Shenandoah mistake. Uh, eliminate, caught too far up. Mango out of rotation. And it leads to a goal here in a match point for Mount St. Mary's. Yeah, a limb kind of trusting Kiazi there to meet that ball and win that 50-50 in favor of Shenandoah. But 
Mount St. Mary's is just able to get there just a smidge faster. Kiazi not able to make contact with that ball, leaving a limb really in no man's land uh, on that yeah. goal there for Mount St. Mary's. But the aggression coming in huge again. But Fuzzy with another demo on to Kiazi. These demos are coming in huge in really stopping any kind of forward momentum that Shenandoah is coming out with. Yeah, and right now, SU trying to get something going, trying to push the initiative, not able to quite do so. And that's an unfortunate bounce right there. But Mango, recognizing that, is there to save the day. And now Shenandoah is on the counterattack, not quite able to put the ball past Fuzzy. And now it, Shenandoah really trying to, to push this initiative. They want a game five here. Yeah, toss up for Mango, unable to get there fast enough. King Julian in the perfect position to get that save. Elim back on rotation. Piazzi as well getting back for the defense. All three members there. Mango trying to make something happen, but Fuzzy is there yet again to get a huge save in favor of Mount St. Mary's. It's only a one-point game here. 2.45 left with Mount St. Mary's on the attack. Yeah, and right now a big attack forming from Mount St. Mary's. Fuzzy, is he going to be able to get on the end of that and clear it? No, he can't. Mango is going to tie things up here in game number four. Shenandoah not down and out of it yet and plenty of time left on the board. Yeah, King Julian there looks like he's going for that ball, but instead takes out the car of Kiazi, and that is able, uh, allows for Kiazi to really get that clear just barely before mm -hmm. he gets demoed. And really, Mango sees that opportunity and strikes tying up this game one apiece with 2.30 left now and <laughs> answered right back Kiazi. I don't know if that was a miscommunication there on the side of Mount St. Mary's, but in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So yeah, that's what it looks like. McCaden not able to beat Kiazi to that ball. Perfect play, perfect shot there from Kiazi. Yeah, and really a massive mistake there by Mount St. Mary's and it leads to a big, big goal. Of course, still over two minutes left in this one, but Shenandoah with the goal lead and a chance to force game number five here. McCaden trying to just lob that over the heads of Shenandoah, not quite able to do so. And now Fuzzy on the attack. Can he beat Eliminate? No, he cannot. And now Kiazi trying to go for a second goal of the match. Not quite able to find anything, but that's a favorable demo in fa uh, for Mango. But no one on Shenandoah was really expecting or, or in position to capitalize on that. Yeah, Kiazi seems like he wanted to follow that up, but misses that full boost in the middle there. Uh, unable to really come and support Mango in that push. Right now, Mount St. Mary's on the aggression. Fuzzy gets a demo against Kiazi, but the clear will come through. Shot on goal, but Fuzzy is able to get back in time to get the save there off of the respawn. Kiazi missing the aerial there. Not good news for Shenandoah, but Mango is there in position. 2v2 now. Mango wins the 50-50 there against, uh, I believe that was King Julian there on that aerial uh, attack. Uh, another bounce dangerous in front of the net there uh, for Shenandoah, but the clears are coming back and forth, but King Julian will follow up. The clear not strong enough. Mount St. Mary's tying it up to a piece. Yeah, and really just had that awkward Rocket League bounce right in front of the goal. Not, not, no one on defense wanting to commit to that because of the awkward angle and the position of the ball and, and Shenandoah when they go for the clear unfortunately no one is left in the back of the net to deal with it yep. and it's an easy cleanup for Mount St. Mary's who has now reclaimed the deadlock or not I guess not reclaimed the deadlock it brought it back to a deadlock between these two teams as now there's a minute left to play both teams here in game number four locked at two and two apiece. Mango having to get back for this rotation. Kiazi makes it back as well. Clear in favor of Shenandoah. Mango and Elim trying to make something happen. Pinch against that wall, but the clears are going to come through for Mount St. Mary's. Kiazi again whiffing on the ball there, but his teammates on the rotation back on defense able to save that ball from rolling right into Shenandoah. It's not Elim again, but the contest from King Julian is there, able to knock it free. Mango trying to make something happen, but McHayden again. Mount St. Mary's seems to be playing for overtime here, but with 20 seconds left, both sides are, are trying to make something happen on offense, but just unable to puncture the defense on either side. Yeah, right now, both both teams looking absolutely stalwart in their defenses as another big save. But Eliminate is going to find the back of the net with seven seconds left here in game number four. Shenandoah is now seven seconds away from forcing a game number five. Can they hold 
for the last seven seconds of the match, Ben? That is the question that we're about to see answered. Yeah, this kickoff is going to mean a lot here. It's stunted, but King Julian's able to get through and send it to the corner. This ball is going to be in the air now with one second left, able to spike it down. Shenandoah forcing a game number five, winning game four, three to two. And a absolutely phenomenal job by Eliminate to find the back of the net right there and give yep. Shenandoah a massive, massive win in that round. Yep. And now, I don't want to say I called it, Ben, <laughs> I, but well, I called it. You, you kind of still did got here, it. Yeah. I still got it. This old man still got <laughs> it. Uh, heading into game number th uh, five, I almost said three. Ooh. Uh, maybe I don't still got it. I might, have been, I might have been talking too big of a game right there. But uh, no, able to force a game number five in a spectacular yep. fashion as well. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, what we've seen between every single one of these games we could see it overtime here in game number five. Yeah, and at the end of that game there with that final goal from your Lim Mango also did a great job yes. sending that ball off of the roof there. Those are really hard shots to kind of yeah. defend there, especially when it's straight down in front of the net. And Mango doing a good job of just getting his car in the way of Mount yeah. St. Mary's, right? Having to path around something that's not the ball and something that's not just walls and the ground, <laughs> yeah. right, is, is a difficult thing An to do. An unintended obstacle. An unintended obstacle, yes. Uh, we can see some re... Oh, not replays. That <laughs> what did that come from? <laughs> Kickoff immediately won uh, by I Mango there. I thought that was a replay. <laughs> a limb coming up huge in the first three seconds, making it 1-0 Shenandoah. And uh, what a start for Shenandoah. You can't ask for a better start than that. Three-second goal. Uh, you were talking about how quick goals are in this Ben I think that I think three That's seconds it's two or three one of the one of the one of the ones and no <laughs> Shenandoah's lead goes away just like that blink and you'll miss it a unfortunate miss on defense by SU but a great shot there by King Julian and just an unfortunate miss for Shenandoah and we're back to square one within 13 seconds. <laughs> All right, we're back to 0-0, zero, zero, right? Kiazi just a little bit slow on that flip there. Oh, McCaden coming from the aerial, trying to get the double tap, but unable to do so. Uh, really, Shenandoah's clears have gotten a lot better in these last few rounds here uh, and games. Uh, and really, it's been a limb and mango trying to find these angles, being able to get uh, these setups for Kiazi. Kiazi has had his moments being able to follow up Mango now. No more boost available, but Elim is there, unable to make contact. King, Jul King Julian with a good clear, but Kiazi there to answer. Yeah, and you were talking about how great Shenandoah's clears have been, except for, you know, the goal that they, that they just <laughs> gave up. But, uh, no, I, 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 I do agree completely. They've been absolutely phenomenal on the defensive end, barring the, the major mistakes that they've made. Uh, and it, it's great to see them able to adjust after a, a, a few rough games. And now, as they go into counterattack, Mango goes for the flip reset on the ball! Not oh. able to squeak it at the back of the net! And no follow-up there by Kiazi. Mango almost just was almost just hit a clip. Yeah, that was almost a clip indeed. Mango finding multiple shots in a row on goal. Uh, another one almost there, just a little right there towards that post. But the follow-up hasn't been able to come through in full force from Shenandoah. The boosts are not there. Having to retreat Kiazi, as you can see, out of boost on your screen, has to retreat and try to recover. The cross now from Mango over to Elim, 70 boost in his pocket. But now Mount St. Mary's has control here. Kiazi trying to make something happen. The pass to Mango will not get there fast enough as King Julian is able to get the clear. McCaden trying to make something happen. Yeah, and right now it, it's between these two teams. It's just, it's just a game of tennis. Both teams knocking it from one end to the other, one end to the other, not really able to get anything going. Both teams trying to force a mistake. Uh, uh, on the other, I, I think the key in this one is going to be to see if someone goes for a demo. Uh, and if yep. that demo is successful in messing up the rotations, because that's not, it's needed right now. Both teams are not messing up their rotations on defense. Uh, hopefully I didn't just cast and curse that, but uh, <laughs> it's been great. It's been absolutely phenomenal defense for both teams to start uh, the game, aside from the first 17 seconds. Yeah, Fuzzy able to get uh, a demo there. Mango n missing the flip there. King Julian finding the perfect angle that Mango is unable to get there fast enough to contest that shot. 
King Julian off of that wall. 2-1 now in favor of Mount St. Mary's, but still 2-18 left on the clock. Plenty of time for Shenandoah to tie it up. Yeah, and that that one hurts if you're Mango. You're, you're in position just barely a, a fraction of a second too late, and it doesn't allow you to get... Uh, to stop the ball from going to the back of the net. And that was such a slow goal, too. Yep. And, and it's, it, those are always the worst ones to give up. Mango, though, trying to make it work and is able to center it for Kiyazi, but an even better save by King Julian. And Mount St. Mary's hanging on for dear life in this game number five, trying to prevent Shenandoah from tying things up, and they are able to do just that uh, with some phenomenal saves. Yeah, demo coming through on McHayden, but unable to do anything about that. Mount St. Mary's able to get that clear. Elim now almost has full boost, has to use some of it to get back on defense. But really, these 50-50s have really been just that. 50-50s. We don't know where these contests are going to go. So that's players go. don't even know. I, that's what it seems like to me right now. Kiazi able to get that one, however, able to squeeze that under McHayden's car. But Fuzzy able to get the pass over to McHayden, Kiazi getting the demo onto Fuzzy, however, stopping the momentum. But the shot coming in, Elim there just in time to save the day for Shenandoah, keeping this a one-score game. <laughs> one minute left to go on the clock. McHayden trying to get aggressive, but clear coming through from Kiazi. Mango not able to follow up in time. What is happening in this game? The heat has been dialed up to max. Uh, it, it, if, you, if you're looking at a stove, it's on the highest setting it, it can go. Both these teams just back and forth. It's like watching a heavyweight battle of just slugging going out. L hooks being thrown left and right, uppercuts. Uh, who knows? I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. <laughs> but this has been an absolutely phenomenal last minute 30 in this game. And Mango with a dangerous ball floating up towards the top. But no one on Shenandoah able to to capitalize on that opportunity. And right now, Shenandoah needs a goal here to send it to OT, but right now, it, it right now, Matt St. Mary's is just looking absolutely phenomenal on defense. 10 seconds left here now for Shenandoah to get this goal in here. Elim unable to win the 50-50 there. The ball still in the air, one second left, but the disrupts are coming through from Mount St. Mary's. McCaden is gonna be able to hold on and win the series three to two. And so close for Shenandoah there, finding that last little bit but Mount St. Mary's holds strong and is able to secure the win yep. in game number five. And mm -hmm. what a game five that was. I mean, yep. right from the get, three seconds in, uh, <laughs> yep. we had a goal. So, I mean, it was absolutely just phenomenal between both these yep. teams. Uh, and, and shout out both uh, both sets of three because those players are absolutely phenomenal for that match. Yeah, both sides throwing punches left and right, of course, going all the way to game number five. The first 13 yeah. seconds of game number five, <laughs> having two goals yeah, that was scored. Crazy. Uh, really just a good play, some bad rotations from both sides yeah. uh, in this game, but it was really just the clears and these demos coming through from both sides that yeah. really defined this series and who was really going to come out on top. Yeah, and it's... It, it's an unfortunate loss for Shenandoah, but there's also so many positives you can take away right. uh, from this game. I think cleaning up some of the defensive rotations, mm -hmm. I think definitely is going to be on uh, Coach uh, Coach Qualark's uh, priority <laughs> list. Uh, maybe Coach Easy is, might might have some things to say to them as well. But still, a, a, a phenomenal job there by yep. Shenandoah to, to force a game number five after being down and out seemingly in yep. in game number four. Uh, so big on them uh, for that and really just a great job by yeah. Shenandoah. Yeah, a great showing from both sides here. Of course, there's always things to work on when you think about video games especially. There's always some sloppiness yeah. to any game, right? Um, but even uh, even outside of video games too. In real yeah, sports too, there's always course, sloppiness. Of course, of course. There's always, you know, interceptions, you know, yeah. Super Bowl, that's coming up. Excited for that one. Go Niners. Let, let's go Niners. <laughs> All right, back to uh, the business at hand here. Uh, yeah, Shenandoah did not have a bad outing here whatsoever. No. Um, and, and yeah, so I think that will uh, wrap us up for the evening. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the Shenandoah broadcast, and we will see you next time. Oh, you, you can spray this. Yep, there's one. Oh, nice. Gets out with his life.
but he's calm and cool. Nice, gets a second, gets a third. Noble, can he go for the ace? Noble gets the ace! Absolutely. Noble! Maybe trying to push through this. Gecko does get the flash. And Scherzer does get one, does get two as well. Now it's a 1v1 here. Oh! Scherzer gets the kill! A huge... Example of just, you know, playing your life, trying to get at least one. And then Clabiola does get power. And Noble pushes out the smoke. Gets one. Gets two. Can they find the third? Cersei gets that three. And it's five. Three. Clabiola can't get two. Miso is now putting them in a 3v3 situation. Ultra Lee. Miso gets two. Now it's a 1v1. Ryu comes down. 2v4 there for Ringling College. Noble getting another pick there on the brain. Ryu gets a pick on the Miso. And Claviella cleans up the last. Has an idea where oh! they're at and gets the kill. As Claviella is gonna clutch. Got a here. Does realize that though. Claviella gets one. He's trying to get the second. Does get that second. Three down on the side of Ruling College. Now it's a one. Ryu gets that first pick. Oh, Aries, good for two. 